Suspension and chassis need to be matched for a motorcycle to carry a rider safely at speed. Every motorcycle's geometry can be adjusted to make it fit the rider's size, weight and riding style. So we're going to show you how we prepare our team bikes. Four completely different riders on four completely different bikes. One thing I want to do today to start with, and I think it's a big problem that a lot of people have, is they have this idea in their head of what they want their bike to be doing, and it's all the suspension fault if it's not right. They completely overlook the chassis, and I think before you touch your suspension, the most important thing is to get the bike to fit you with the available adjustment. So what we'll do, we'll get a screwdriver each, and let's just go to the middle of the clickers, front and rear and everything. And then we'll go for a lap. And then start to think about what you don't like about the bike. And then we'll start playing with fork kites, bar position, static sag. What I use this track for, whichever bike I bring here, I use it to plant the front end. I'm going from everything, Honda, Suzuki, Husky, Yamaha, KDM, I'm riding all these different chassis and there's no point thinking about suspension action until you've got that front wheel planted. And I find the best way to do that is straight up, fork height, bar position, get the sag. And once you feel you can trust that front end with stock suspension, then you can really home in on like, right, now it's time to start dialing clickers. So we've got Steve Moritz coming today, he's JMS suspension. All right, let's do it. By starting in a neutral position with the suspension clickers, you're going to get a clearer indication of whether the standard bike is sprung for your weight. You're really not heavy enough to get a gauge on where we should be at with this bike. That's the whole point of getting Steve here, is to get the right springs in this for you. Yeah, okay. And you can actually start to feel how this bike really does handle, yeah. as opposed to just skipping around on what probably feels like supercross suspension. <laughs> yep. At around 90 kilos, I'm already too heavy for the standard 125 spring rates, but I've managed to mask it a little with clicker adjustments. As for Carson, the standard WR450 springs are ideal for his weight, even in a motocross scenario. He can confidently send the WR into big flatlands, but his biggest issue is in the chassis. Carson has spent the last two years on Huskies and is still trying to find that cornering sweet spot with the WR. Front was very twitchy and just couldn't get it to sit into the stroke to do the turn. Yeah. Just any time I, and when I tried to do it, I'd end up going over the berm and over the bus. I notice you've got your fork right at the base, so you've got it raked out to the max. And I've made that mistake before, even with the 125, thinking this is a fast track, I want that stability. And I've raked it right out, dropping the forks down, and it didn't give me the result I was after. So I went back the other way. And this is what I was trying to explain to you last night, Casey. Yeah. When you get the fork on that perfect angle to actually telescope properly, mm -hmm. all that chatter and twitchiness and tank slap yep. can go away because the fork's getting to do its job. And you've gone tighter, so you get the benefit of railing ruts as well. Yeah. Like it's a clever compromise. Yeah. So we know now that that last setting, we've narrowed this down to the ideal geometry for you. Yeah, definitely. We've, however, let's try one more thing, Both. the bar position. Yep. Because you are forward, that twitch that you're talking about, yep. I reckon we can neutralize that just with your bar positioning. Like look past the actual comfort and just set the bars more to suit the weighting of the front end. Because it's yep. a huge difference. When you sit central on the bike and you've got the bar position full forward, that weight effect on the front end is completely different to when the bars are full back. And you're not doing anything but just sitting down on the bike. 
JMS suspension is in the house. Steve, you've met Casey. Yeah, yeah, I saw you on Coast of Tango. Yeah, yeah, the days that Riley went over. You guys know Riley, Riley. (laughs) Mini Blitz. Yeah. We're at the final stage of yep. we've done four kite, we know which direction we want to go, now we've changed bar position. Yep. Further you go back with the bars, the more leverage you have over the steering. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It doesn't even <laughs> oh. shut off. No, nah, that's real good. Yes or no with that position? A lot better. A lot better? A lot Good. better. I figured that. That's just ironed out any twitch up front. Yeah. And you think about what you did there earlier, you wouldn't even be in that situation for that to happen. No, it was a lot more confidence expiring as I was coming around. Instead of it bouncing and pulling up, yep. I could just get it to tuck in. Pulling the bars back like that, when you sit in the middle of the bike, your new middle is like an inch back now, which yep. has a big... Ch- um, effect on the front end. Okay, time to get serious. Let's get the right spring rates in the 125. I know, I know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be like 200. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. You won't see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's such a push bike that it's, ah, oh, that was a bit hard on the suspension, whatever. You can manhandle it you just, more, yeah. No, you're not going there, you're going here. Yeah. So it's sort of, yeah. Different to a four fifty. Yeah, I'm gonna do what yeah. I think to say if I was gonna jump out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. No, that's why you're here, mate. Yeah. You do exactly what you think you need to do. Uh, all sorts of shit's gone down today. We've turned settings on their head, we've shuffled bar position four kites, and so far. Well, we've still got a lot of work to do with Casey, but I'm much more at home on the YZ, but I was pretty close anyway. Um, The one thing I'm glad about is Carson's now unlocking the full potential of this WR. go heavier in a spring or lighter in a spring than standard, you have to balance the bowing up internally. Enter our fourth team member, Jesse Lawton, who's a little late to the party. Our phone call, I had a pretty good idea on what you wanted. Steve's already done it. Yep. So um, let's just smash out some laps and let's fine tune from there but I think we're a lot closer to where you need to be now. Yeah I think we're on the same page from like you said from the phone call. Jesse is our enduro weapon heading into this season on a 250F against much bigger machines. So corner speed is key for Jesse. The rear's like pretty good. Like I, I don't even know which way to go. Like You know you're in the zone when you don't know what to change. Yeah. I'm not sure how to think about it because all we've done is push the forks through and I'm happy with it, you know? Which is, it sounds like I've, um, I'm struggling to give feedback, but I think I'm just happy with the bike. We already did the research. Happy, yeah. We did the work. And like it all comes down to our conversation, I knew you were pretty much in the zone with this bike. Um, we just had to knock the edge off the valving and get it to give you access to the full part of the stroke, yeah. really, front and back. Um, well, my biggest concern was it blowing all the way through, and I haven't even had that yeah. issue at all. With what we learnt in the other three riders, myself included, and the other bikes, We've fast tracked you to this. Oh yeah. So don't feel weird like, well shit, I'm I'm just here already and I'm yeah. happy. That's good man. Yeah, you can tell, like it's yeah. worked, whatever you've done. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't even have to post it to the East Coast. <laughs>
Well, you're all about to get your first unofficial lap time in the dirt kitchen. I say unofficial because the track's pretty average. It's hard pack, square edge and bull dust. So after your lap time, we're gonna work out the differences between each rider and whatever that time difference is, times by five laps. And that's gonna be the stagger. And we race to the Chucky Checkers, who is the current lap record holder of the Dirt Kitchen. Game on. Everyone is pushing harder now, and while we expected the big WR450 to run the quickest lap time, Jesse came in two seconds quicker on the YZ250F. Casey has a two and a half minute head start on me. I've got a 50 second head start on Carson, and then Carson has only 10 seconds on Jesse. Let the games begin. Hey boys, eat my dust.
final lap. I'm now in striking distance of Casey, and Carson is now in striking distance of me, while Jesse is still circulating in the heaviest dust. Let's just say I was strategically placed for the win. But after 20 minutes of racing in challenging conditions, our bikes are as ready as we are. Big ask at the back, eh, Jesse? Oh, yeah. Let's not talk about it. Looked like you did a desert race. Steve, Yo. that is the best finale because we all switch off about the bike. Yeah, yeah. It's just attack mode. And the bike does its job. Yeah. Everybody was pushing. It's sketchy as. No one binned it. Nailed it. No, it's good. I'm happy. Like this bike's better than me, even though it is a little one too far. No, he did well. Oh, far out. Pretty impressive. What do you think, Casey? Uh, Casey. I reckon the truck got worse it as we were out there. That was rapidly. Tough. Hey. Yeah. That was it never tough. gets this many people motoring in one <laughs> hit. You know. Yeah. Bikes are ready to race, I think. Obviously, we've got some fine tuning into the in the bush to yep. do now, so we'll go no, have lunch good. and chill out, and that'll be this Arvo session. Yeah, we could. But mate, Steve, to deal with four completely different riders on four completely different bikes, that's a successful oh. two days so far. Oh, thanks. That's good. Nailed it, mate. Thank you. But uh, thanks for uh, watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, A Reman One. And in the description, check out the link for JMS Suspension. Steve Moritz and our sidekick Mini Blitz have transformed these bikes for this episode. Uh, and yeah, we're all set to go wherever we want now. Travel, racing, bring it.